Good morning once again. I am Shelley and welcome. Uh, good morning or afternoon or evening wherever you happen to be. Uh, it's Wednesdays which means I'm going to do another demonstration. So today, well first of all, if you are here, uh, make sure you mention where you're from. But I'd also like to know how you found me. <laughs> how did you end up here? Did you find me through Facebook or Instagram or, or YouTube? Um, you know, that's helpful to me. So uh, if you could put maybe how you found me, uh, whether it was a friend referral or something like that, that'd be great. Um, now, hands up if you've ever avoided doing a portrait because there was hands in the picture. You know, somebody was sitting like this or like this, and you avoided doing that portrait because there was hands in it. I'm guilty. Uh, I, have, I have been afraid of doing hands in the past. Uh, but I want, so that's why I really wanted to, um, kind of start from the ground level on this one. I really wanted to start with the whole drawing process. Very often I will take a shortcut and I will actually trace from the photograph. And for me, that's just a time saver, but I always continue to work on my drawing skills. And it's something that I recommend it, it, it allows you to be more creative. It allows you to um, edit, you know, you have a photo and maybe something's not quite right about it and you want to do, um, you know, you want to change something. How are you going to do that unless you are always working from a perfect photo? Uh, it doesn't happen too much <laughs> through Eric Rhodes. Awesome. Well, speaking of Eric Rhodes and Streamline uh, art videos, Tomorrow, uh, you can mark your calendars, tomorrow at noon, um, I will be the guest artist. So um, so I will be back and talking to Erica again tomorrow. And uh, yeah, so, and if you're on YouTube, I'm also doing on Friday afternoon at 3 p.m. Eastern time, I am also going to be um, there for the, the um, Streamline art video, uh, presentation of my video. So um, I'll be there to answer any of your questions. All right, so let's let's jump into this. Um, first of all, I'm going to talk about the materials that we'll be using. So let me just uh, move on over here. Um, whoops, wrong, sorry. There we go. All right, so um, this is my reference picture here. I got this from unsplash.com. I actually put uh, the artist and everything on the under the description of this video, so it's there. And I'm going to draw this out, but um, before I start, I will talk about the materials and one of the things, oh, I have a dirty palette. <laughs> one of the things I'm going to do here is I'm going to get my paints softened up. So in order to do that, I'm actually using a pipette and I'm going to come around and squeeze quite a bit of water on each of these wells so that it can penetrate the paint and get it nice and creamy before we begin because if I'm trying to get any rich color out of this and it's all hardened uh, I'm just gonna wear out my brushes so I don't want to do that and there we go all right a little bit more here and I'm pretty generous with the water uh, some people use a spray bottle spray bottle works pretty good but uh, doesn't penetrate enough it gets the surface wet sure but it doesn't penetrate the wells and, and the color all the way down to the bottom of the well so I think I'm just about there all right so lots of water I put on there right and uh, you know you can see it's actually puddling on each of my wells and I usually do that about 15 minutes before I actually begin the painting process so while I'm drawing I'm softening up my paint this palette because I always get asked what kind of palette I'm using is a um, speedball color wheel palette and uh, for obvious reasons it is shaped a a like a color wheel so that we can um, arrange our colors and that is how I've actually arranged the colors in here uh, very much like a color wheel I've grouped together all my blues and my reds and my yellows and um, 
and then the the transitioning color so between my blues and my yellows I have my greens and so on I have my oranges in between my red and yellow etc and uh, so th that is what I'm doing. Most of the colors I have on my palette here are Da Vinci watercolors, uh, which is an artist quality, uh, available most of most of North America. I'm not sure elsewhere where if it's available, but uh, certainly North America it's available. I have um, a few Winsor Newton colors in here. I also have some Core and some Da Vinci, uh, but mostly it is. Uh, uh, or sorry, Daniel Smith, but mostly it's Da Vinci. Uh, so good morning, St. Augustine and Blackpool. And, and um, yeah, I see a lot of familiar faces every week. And I, I just want to take a minute and say thank you so much. Uh, you know, you're the reason I do this. And, you know, you guys help share and you comment all the time. And, and I got to tell you how much I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um, okay, so I have um, Arches, 140 pound cold pressed paper that I'm going to be working on. And for my um, pencil, I'm just using a standard, what is this, a number two <laughs> mechanical pencil. That's all, uh, nothing fancy. I'm, I'm just using a standard pencil. And I'm going to be using a kneaded eraser. Okay, a kneaded eraser. I prefer the kneaded because it um, it doesn't require this motion, the abrasion motion on your paper. So I can basically, you know, stick it down and pull up the excess uh, graphite. So so that works out great. Um, so I'm watching where where everybody's coming from. Oh my goodness, everywhere, Korea and uh, Acton, <laughs> London, Ontario, and uh, um, North Bay. Oh my goodness all over. Oh, thank you. So um, I, I am kind of asking to if if you could mention how you found me, how did you stumble across me? Was it Instagram, Facebook, uh, YouTube? Did you YouTube recommend me? Um, and uh, if you didn't, if you're not familiar with me, uh, I am a full time realistic watercolor artist in Ontario, Canada. And this is my channel and I have lots of these on here. So um, you can check that out uh, or subscribe or, or um, hit the like button or hit the, um, the bell icon and you'll get notifications when I am going live so you don't forget all that good stuff. So, um, so that's great. So we're using mostly Da Vinci paint. We are using Arches 140 pound cold pressed paper the brushes, I'll tell you that mostly what I like to use are squirrel hair brushes. So I have a couple of different kinds here. Uh, this one's actually a travel brush and, you know, it comes apart and you can, you know, just put, put it inside and carry it around and it's very handy. But they're both uh, a squirrel hair type where it has a nice point and uh, a big fat belly so it holds lots of water or paint, whatever the case may be. So that's mostly what I'm going to be using. Two water containers, lots of paper towels, um, the usual. So I want to talk about this uh, drawing process. First of all, when I look at this image, I can see that it is a longer format than my paper is. So I want to uh, see if I can get this to fit in properly. If I were to draw this to fit this, my hands would look too stretched. They they would be too stretched high and they wouldn't look right. So the very first thing before you start drawing your 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 uh, watercolor out is determine the um, the format that you are working in. You know, if, if it's a landscape or a portrait, um, sometimes I see people and they, t they grab a photo and it's a landscape photo and they'll do it on a a portrait format because their watercolor pad was in that format. You know, they had, they flipped the lid out of the way and they worked that way. But you have to really think ahead, like how is this going to fit onto this paper? And um, so this is a little bit, little bit tall. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually tape off some of this so that I have a similar format. 
right? I could also just add more dark to the top of this, but I'm just going to, this is just a study, so I'm just going to crop this to a similar format. And there is a way to check whether or not you have the right format. Um, let me see if I have something here. Uh, I'll use this little card. So let's say, for example, this is my reference. This is actually something I painted, but um, let's say this is my reference. And this is the size right here. Right, there's the size of it, and I'm sticking it right in the corner. And if I were to take a ruler and draw it across like this on a diagonal from this corner to this corner and keep going, this should line up. So without this tape on here. Okay, so for this image, this size paper would probably be about right because look how these line up corner to corner to corner, right? And that's how you can always get the right, the correct dimensions, vertically and horizontally, when you are working from a photograph. All right, so I'm going to set that aside. This reference, however, is not as tall, so I'm going to, I'm going to eyeball this. I'm not going to measure it because I don't have a printed out copy, uh, but I'm going to eyeball this at about here. Okay. So I can keep that other part of the paper clean if I just stick another piece of tape there. And there, so we're just ignoring that part. I could I could actually put a piece of tape top and bottom and make it a little bit more central. That actually would work out a little smarter, wouldn't it? So if I put one here, And one here, that also gives me a more in the middle kind of thing, right? So, so that format is similar to the format of my original uh, photograph. Great photograph, isn't it? Like this, uh, this photograph um, shows hands and the character in these hands is wonderful. Uh, these are obviously working hands, older hands, um, you know, lots of uh, lots of little imperfections in them and, and aging and, and that sort of thing. So lots and lots of character. So if you've avoided putting any hands in your paintings or in your portraits uh, because hands are hard to draw, I see people do the same thing with teeth and I have a demo on that, but uh, um, I, I have seen people avoid putting that in and that, you know, can be so much character. Like, you know, you could have somebody like this and you know looking very sort of melancholy or something like that hands can be so expressive so instead of uh, avoiding them try try practicing them you know just do a study like i'm going to do right now it's obviously not going to be you know a finished painting or anything like that but you know it's a great practice so i see that that top knuckle is about here and the side of the hand is about here. So I see a line that kind of curves like this. Now, I want you to think about hands as planes. I see a box type shape, shape here. That is this part of the hand. You know, the fingers are all pretty much lined up and they are all facing the sky. They are all getting similar light. Then the hand, the fingers turn downward and we are getting more shadow on the, that part of the hand. So we have a change of plane, so we need to um, direct that down. So let, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit closer. This is, I'm sure, hard to see because it's hard to, for me to see on screen. There we go. All right, so this is the first plane here, this this sort of box facing the facing straight up to the sky. Then it changes direction and faces downward and the fingers come to a point. Now we have a side of the hand like this. So now it actually has uh, more dimension to it because it's actually like a little box. Sorry, my camera doesn't like uh, just plain white paper. I'll 
put my hand there, hopefully it'll have an easier time of focusing. Um, all right, so coming under here, we have a shape kind of like this. And let's turn that into a box as well. Now, this seems very crazy, right? Turning a hand into a box, but really I'm turning it into the planes of the hand, the, you know, the top, the side, the front, and that sort of thing. So break it down into that type of thing first. Uh, we have one other uh, plane that is here, and this middle finger is actually facing down a little bit more. So as I start to section each of these fingers, I will keep that in mind that the that central central finger, that middle finger, has a little bit more downward turn um, at the end of the finger. And so when I am starting my drawing, and I, you can see I'm not pressing hard with any of this. If I press hard, um, like these are working lines, what I'm doing right now, they're working lines and I don't want to press hard because I don't want them to be a permanent part of the finished drawing. So I'm going to start tapering this off more like that. And each of these fingers now, I can start to begin to see the planes for each of these. Now I have a thumb back there too. Let's see if I can get this thumb in here. This thumb has, let's start with a box. Okay, so we've got, it's bent, so it's a bent box. It's actually two boxes. And so we have a box there, all right? Uh, sometimes you will see people use, use um, cylinders or tubes instead, uh, but, but, but I find people really struggle with the ellipses with uh, ovals and tubes and things like that. So um, sometimes boxes can be a little bit easier to wrap your head around. Um, oh, thank you so much, uh, John. And uh, I'm just reading some of the comments here. Um, uh, okay, so uh, yeah, actually, you know what? It's delightful that most of these comments have been I have been referred by word of mouth, so that's that's uh, that's the best advertising ever. Anyway, I appreciate that. Thank you so much for that feedback. Um, all right, so let's let's uh, start breaking down these shapes now. We can already start to see a hand forming here now, and sorry, my camera doesn't like being quite this close. Let's zoom out a little bit. There we go. Hang in there, camera. <laughs> okay, so this, this last finger is very hard to see. Um, because it's in perspective, sorry, it just keeps going in and out of focus. We'll see if I can get this uh, in here quicker and get a little bit more on the paper. Uh, cameras don't like white too much. They also don't like black too much because they, they're not really sure what to, to focus on when we do that. So you notice as I'm doing these boxes, as I'm, as I'm dividing up these shapes, uh, it is all right, I'll put my hand there. Hopefully it'll have a little better time there. And you can maybe see some of the pencil lines a little bit more. I don't know why this keeps going in and out of focus, but anyway, so as I'm doing each of these hands, like this one's in perspective, and this this index finger on uh, this person's left hand is barely visible. Like it's really just a sliver, right? So in this case, I started with the closest finger, the, the finger that was closest to me, the one in front, and then I um, worked my way toward the back. All right, so we already have, um, you know, a good foundation for the drawing on this. Let me just come in and 
uh, get this cuff in here. We won't spend too much time working on the cuff, but uh, just get something in there anyway. This comes right about from the middle of that finger and up around the hand, but not all the way to the knuckle. I can see that it ends up here somewhere. All right, so you can see this drawing is very, very rough. Uh, these are the construction lines. We need to get the good, good bones to start with, good skeleton, uh, you know, so that it doesn't... Uh, now I think I can extend this finger a little bit more and this one and this one. I think I put these fingers a little bit too short there, so I'll make them a little bit longer. And uh, it's hard to tell what's on, what's under that hand, and it doesn't matter. So uh, it's probably a cane or something. So no, no uh, details at this point. And um, we've got the structure, but now I'm going to start to work on the the shapes and refine start refining the shapes a little bit more so I'm looking to see where these sort of knuckles are and this comes from that it doesn't come from this one it, it, this sort of the back of the hand part here we can't see much of it it's very foreshortened and so it comes pretty far back here and it just ends up being a very small shape there. All right, so each of these knuckles is going to be a little wider than the, the rest of the finger, of course. So let's refine the line a little bit. And if you have any questions about what it is I'm doing, uh, for you, if you need a further explanation, like why boxes or something like that, um, you know, feel free to ask. That's what it's all about here. We're very casual. Uh, no, uh, nor, no need for formalities. And all right. So this this knuckle is very short. These ones aren't really bent, except for this one. This one, we see quite a bend in that finger. So that one is pointing down. Now, I'm going to start to indicate some of the nails. Not to any great extent, not, like not high detail, just I'm just trying to get the basic shapes in here. And I would say keep up your drawing skills. They will serve you well in your painting and it helps you to, you know, if you've hand drawn something, it means you've already studied it to draw it. So by the time you get to the painting process, you are already very familiar with your subject. More so than you would be if you were to simply trace the subject. All right, so in a minute I'm going to have to take this kneaded eraser and start erasing some of these working lines because these working lines are great for helping me get the main structure, but I don't want them in my finished painting. Good morning, Indonesia. Awesome. Niagara. Awesome. California. Wonderful. DC, Washington, DC. Um, all right, so other hand, here we go. I'm going to start refining the, the finger here. There's several digits. We have this knuckle, this knuckle, and this knuckle. So there's a set of three for every digit, right? Even, even your thumb, you've got this one and this one. Um, the other one's actually way back here, but Two here, two here, two here, etc. And so I'm just 
roughing in at this point the the fingernails. Let's see if we can get this on here. And then I'll start refining even further. So I start off with basic shapes and then I start refining. So um, don't start off with detail. What are you going to do if you start off with detail only to find out that, oh, that was in the wrong place or that was the wrong length or width or whatever the case may be? Uh, you know, at, at what and then what are you going to do? So you'll have to go in and start really erasing a lot of stuff. Okay. So this middle finger here has kind of a downward shaped nail. I can't even really tell whether this is a man or a woman's hands, but it doesn't matter. Um, you can, sometimes you can tell the difference, especially in a young person, but uh, in this case it's a little hard to tell. A little bit of misshaping, so there's obviously a little arthritis in there, uh, but that's, that's our basic shapes here. All right, so we have our lines in there and I'm going to start erasing some of the working lines. So take out some of this stuff we won't need. And once I'm satisfied that it's looking pretty close to what I want, then I can you know, maybe add in a little bit more detail. It all depends on the style in which you're painting. Some of you paint highly realistic, like me. Some of you paint more loosely. Doesn't matter. I just want to get rid of these working lines so that I get the structure correct first. And let's get rid of this one. We'll see if I can... this shape a little better here and so I start fine-tuning at this point right this line is not perfectly straight like a box that's how I started off but now I see it's got a little bit of a curve down and then back up again and so I'm starting to look for for little light changes in the direction and in the curvature of a line to make sure it's not you know looking like a box in the end I don't want I don't want a box for fingers I've got this part starting a little too far that nail actually extends a little bit past okay and So here we've got, actually got a little bit of a, comes up from the nail bed. Like if you were look, to look at my finger, you can see that it goes down towards the nail and then the nail has its own curve. And I want to indicate where these knuckles are. And of course you have, you know, the creases where the knuckles are. So... I was debating whether to do my own hands. I actually took some pictures of my own hands before doing this, but decided this one had far more character than my hands did. Um, okay. And they're not all lined up in a perfectly straight line here either, I'm noticing. So like the the shorter finger, this, like you see that they kind of go up on an angle and then they come back down again. So this finger starts, this knuckle is a little bit higher. So even though I started with kind of a box shape, it's 
got kind of a protruding knuckle here, so let's get that in there. Even though we start with a box shape, we, we do need to refine. Okay, now. Huh. This is this is actually the pad of the finger. Didn't notice this at first, but that's the pad of the finger. And just because the skin is looser in an older person, um, you know, it has actually created a crease there. So um, you've got this really pronounced sort of um, bit of skin there. All right. So most of my lines I will erase and at least those first lines I'm going to erase and then I will start coming in and creating the or getting the paints on here. So I'm going to come up here. This is like cording or something on the on the cuff. And there's a lot of um, a lot of these lines are going to kind of disappear. They're going to be what we call lost edges. Um, the the sweater that this person is wearing, I can barely make it out on my screen because it's very dark, um, is just going to sort of fade into shadow. Let me see. This cuff kind of has a little bit of curve to it. Right. and again we have the, the sweater oh, we have to do this thumb up here I almost forgot about the thumb let's get this in here thumb kind of comes up on a big knuckle there this part of the thumb All right so think of First thing you should think of when you're doing your drawing is what are the planes? Do you know get the planes in there and then start to break it down into the smaller elements. Thanks, Margot. Um, yeah, I thought it was a great subject. This one. Uh, my camera is still struggling with this focus thing. I don't know what is going on today, but. Now my paints are nice and softened up and I'm going to start with a larger brush and I'm going to begin with, um, you know, the kind of the same way. Start with the basics and then start breaking it down. So I'm going to mix um, a nice um, strong color for my shadows. So I'm going to, I'm not going to clean my palette here, I'm just going to use what I have. This was, I was painting something else and that's what's left over. So I'm going to use this paint. I'm going to use a little, uh, oh, that was Quinn Gold. I meant to get Burnt Sienna here. So we'll get some Burnt Sienna. I'm going to put a little permanent rose into this. Turn this slightly. A little permanent rose into that. So we've got uh, Burnt Sienna, permanent rose. And I'm going to add a bit of, um, I'm going to add some neutral tint to this. That's going to darken it. And one thing I find that a lot of people get too much, um, too much blue in their shadows of their um, skin tones. Uh, now this is, this person's very dark skinned, but even so, if you get a lot of blue in there, you end up with a lifeless color. Um, and I, I don't really want lifeless. So this is fairly runny. I'm using this big large brush here. And I'm going to start with just a basic wash on this hand. I want to go around the nails because the nails are quite um, pronounced. They're, they're very light 
relative to the hand color. And so this is an, actually going to end up being one of the lightest colors. I'm going to put a little raw sienna in this on the on the sky facing because it's going to be a little bit warmer color in the in the part that's facing upward. That plane. So each of these planes is going to have a different value. Right? So a little bit more raw sienna in that area, but then back to the sort of a burnt sienna kind of color here as we come down the finger. I'm going to go carefully around the um, those nails, getting right up on the tiptoe of my brush, but I still need to work quickly because things are going to dry fast on me. All right, and I'm going to continue down into this other hand and, the, you know, the two can blend. That's no problem. Get a little bit more sort of light yellowy tone on the top of this hand. Now I'm definitely not going to be able to put the same spit and polish into this demonstration as I would if I were painting um, my normal level of high realism. You have to understand that you know when you're painting highly realistic. It, it's a time investment, so you will take a lot of time. Um, the, pa the paints I am using, if you came in late, the paint I'm using is um, Da Vinci watercolors, and I am working on arches, 140 pound cold press paper. My sheet here is just uh, it's a little, the finish size is going to be about, about uh, six and a half by ten something like that. That's about the size that I'm working. Uh, so there we have sort of the basic wash, the first wash, got getting rid of those whites. I can come in with maybe some of a nice warm red. I'm going to use a rose door. Rose door is a nice sort of orange red. And um, I'm going to get the the red of the um, cuff in here. Oh, I forgot the thumb again. <laughs> what is it with me and the thumb today? Um, I can't do this one because it will run into the hand, right? So I'm going to stop, not paint the other cuff for a second, but I will come back and finish this poor thumb that keeps getting forgotten. There we go, and now this person has a thumb. <laughs> Alright, so that wash is all going to sort of smooth out and even and everything, and even though um, I don't have really any shadows on there yet, you can already tell, tell that this plane is facing the light a little bit more because it's a warmer color. Uh, so I'm thinking in terms of the planes even with my color temperature and uh, so the the part that's facing the light is going to have a little bit more warmth think of the the warm colors are like the sun right so you get these nice warm golden tones in the in the light so I'm going to get a little bit darker a little bit more sort of purple purple brown shall we say more of a eggplant color I guess for some of these shadows and I'm going to come in with my brush not too wet and get into some of the areas that are going to be a little bit darker and I'm just I have to make sure that my brush isn't wetter than my paper um, if it's wetter than the paper what's going to happen is it's going to end up being um, uh, blossoms and um, 
and that sort of thing. So I won't have control over it. So my paint here, if you could see on my palette, my paint isn't puddling, right? It's not puddling. So I'm able to get uh, the darks in here a little bit more um, predictably. As long as what's in my brush isn't as wet as what is on the paper. If my brush is wetter than the paper, that's where the blossoms happen. So I'm looking for these shadows on the sides of the hand and that sort of thing. You know, it's a different plane, right? The, the top of my hand is different from the side of my hand. So that's what I'm working off of here is I'm thinking in terms of the planes as I put these shadows in here. All right, so I'm going to put a little bit more of this in here. I'm going to start to come down the hand, and you notice it's still not doing any of those wrinkles or anything else. Um, I haven't got to the point where I need to really put any wrinkles in yet. Hmm, interesting. It's darker. It seems to be darker on this side. So I'm just going to come down and let some of those shadows just, they'll be very soft and I'm just blotting a little bit off here. But um, come in a little bit darker down here on that, this part of the finger that's bent just a little bit more. Change of plane again. Um, this part of the hand. Let's get into here. We've got the side of the hand is a fair bit darker. Let's come in here and everything's still like a little bit wet. Not it's getting drier every moment that I'm painting here. So as I'm working, I have to keep in mind that my brush has to keep getting drier and drier. If I keep pushing past the that window of time, you can already see, you know, how how nice these are blending, but these ones aren't blending as well. So what I'm going to do is take a clean brush and make sure it's blotted. I'm getting the belly part of the brush, so it's taking a lot of that extra moisture out. And I'm going to run it along here to make sure that it starts to blend in the way I want it to. There we go. I'm laying the brush on its kind of on its side to do that and uh, getting that in there. All right, so I'm going to uh, start looking at the, the nails. Now the nails are a little bit more pink. So, but not pure pink, all right? If you go too pink on this, this could be an old man, I don't know. Uh, but this person is going to end up look like, looking like they have nail polish on. It's going to be far too, too strong. So pretty diluted because it's light in value. And I'm going to come in with this light value on the sides of the nails and then the other side and I'm leaving kind of a highlight in the in the centers where where there's a little bit more light oh this one's really quite this one has no light on it so it's it's going to be completely filled in because it's in shadow there we go and and a little bit on the top and a little bit underneath and I'm leaving that light area right in the middle well I'm saying it's in the middle but it's actually different on every finger as I just mentioned here this one doesn't have it so look at your reference always look at your reference and determine where that is but the fact that I'm leaving a highlight on there helps to describe that that is a rounded shape, right? It actually is catching the light in, in the high point. 
so it is giving me a, um, a curved curved shape. I'm just softening a little bit. Um, not going to worry too much about softening today. I'm just going to worry more about you know getting getting the understanding down, and uh, I can come in with that red now that I wanted to put in for that cuff, and this is dry enough now that I can do that. For a nice bright red, I want to leave a fair bit of that paper showing through. If I put it down really heavily, I won't get that sense of light. Not too worried about the edges. I know that everything around the cuff is going to be uh, surrounded by shadow, so I'm not too concerned about um, you know, getting the shading in there at this point, but I could put a little bit of, say, neutral tint in here. Let's add a little neutral tint and just sort of get that started. I'm going to end up softening that edge. Uh, let's do this one as well. Now this one's not going to blend because it was dry, right? But I can I can make it soften by wetting it. So I'm putting it on dry, but then I will use a damp brush to soften it. There we go. Really using the point of my brush as as I come up to edges so that I can paint a little more tidy. Some of that is actually a little bit wet still. So I'm going to just tickle this edge and let that blend in. It's really dark in here so Obviously, if this were a longer demo, I would be able to really, really get into every nuance of, of what I'm doing, but the I want to get the essence down because, of course, that's, that's going to be the main part. I usually don't have to tell people how to detail, <laughs> but um, yeah, I just want to make sure I'm not missing any questions this morning. Well, you guys are good. You're just watching and taking it in, so I think I've got enough color on here. I'm going to try zooming in. My camera's having a little easier time staying in focus now, so that is the limitation of technology, right? Uh, so you can see a little better what I've done. It's it's not the tidiest painting I've ever done, but it doesn't matter. Um, so I am going to start uh, defining this a little bit more. So I'm going to come into this sort of dark, rusty, rusty, burgundy color. I'm using a little burnt sienna for that, a little uh, permanent rose, neutral tint, and it's giving me a, a nice kind of rosy, burgundy, gray color. Quite dark. All right, so I'm now working a little bit smaller brush and I'm going to start um, breaking down. So I've, I've basically done the same sort of thing where I've kept the plane, uh, the lighter plane on top, one value, then this value, and this value, and I've got paint on my hand already. <laughs> but um, so I'm going to start breaking this down now. And I could do this in multiple layers, uh, but I'm really looking for some of these darks at this point. So on this first finger, the index finger, we have sort of this shadow here that runs alongside the other finger, the middle finger. And so I can start to break apart each of these fingers break up the plane. Now I'm going to soften this line a little bit just with a dampened blotted brush. All right, so that makes that line softer. 
I'm going to come in with even more of this deep burgundy color that I've mixed up. Went a little crazy with the burnt sea or with the neutral tint there, so I'm going to mix a little more over here. Kind of need a little more color than I've mixed up anyway, so that's fine. I have to tell you <laughs> one thing, one funny thing that happened just before I started, like two minutes before I started. I have a camera right here, right here, that I'm on my palette. And I was adjusting it, right? I wanted it to be centered over my palette. And I accidentally knocked it off. And where did it land? Right in my water container. <laughs> I thought, oh my gosh, am I going to get electrocuted taking this out? Anyway, I wiped it off. It seems to be working okay. <laughs> oh, the things that go on behind the scenes. You have no idea. <laughs> so I had a little moment of panic before we started, but uh, all is well. All right, so um, now the top, uh, I'm going to do the next, the next knuckle here. And starting off with, these are kind of tapered lines here, so let's just start off a little bit thin here. Don't make that too thick. And it's also not a line. I really want to emphasize that I'm not painting a line. I'm painting a very narrow shadow. So, so there's a big difference between painting a line and painting a narrow shadow. Uh, first of all, the... The shadow has uh, one edge that's soft. It's also not the same width all the way along. So it, it gets very, where the knuckle is here, it gets very narrow. And so it gets, it gets a little wider as it comes down and that sort of thing. So, oops, that was too much, too much neutral tint. Just come in and brown that down a little bit. Okay, so that's the big thing. I see people see a line between the uh, between the fingers, but looking carefully, it's not a line. It is actually a little small section that is a shadow. So I'm going to come in with a little bit more of this on the last finger. And looking really carefully as I do this, like what is that shape? Does it go over a knuckle? Does it, you know, is it rounded? Like what is going on? So I have to pay attention to all of these things as I'm painting shadows in. So I'm giving it a rinse and a blot and I come along and I just tickle that edge to soften it. That's kind of laying my brush at a 45 degree angle and I'm just sort of tickling that edge, and that's just enough to soften that finger down. Let's get a little bit more shadow right in here. I'm going to come in and go once more on this, this finger right here. That is very much in shadow but I need to soften that edge as well. So blotting my brush 45 degree and just tickle the edge is enough to get that softened. And it's important to remember that, you know, your brush needs to be actually kind of reclined on the, uh, you know, if you can imagine, I'm not on tiptoe here, I'm just sort of laying my brush down as I'm softening these edges. I find some people struggle with softening edges um, Mostly it's because of not blotting the brush enough or or too much, but usually not enough. And there's too much water in the brush, so it pushes at the paint instead of pulling it out, like kind of teasing out that edge rather than trying to push it back into the, into the crevice. So I'm going to come in here and uh, start to get a little bit more shadow along this lower edge here edge of the finger and you can see it's I'm not I'm not getting perfect edges or anything like that none of this is uh, 
you know, we have a very dark background in this case, so I'm not really too fussed. I'm not fussing too much with my um, outer edges here because I know that those are just going to disappear into, uh, you know, into this background here. So I'm not really worried about that. But um, I'm going to do another shadow right here before I finish this finger on the or the hand on the left. I need to get this where one hand connects to another. And this applies whether it's a, a hand or any other shape. When two objects connect, it's always darkest right where they connect. So we've got one hand sitting on top of another hand. Therefore, this part right where they connect is going to be a little bit dark. It's going to be the darkest part, in fact, right where it makes this connection. Now at this point, this this really looks like a young person's hand, doesn't it? Because we don't have the um, any of the details or the creases in here, and you know if you're kind of new to watercolor painting, you might be looking at this going, oh, it doesn't look right, it doesn't look right, and you'll want to go in and start putting putting all those creases in and wrinkles and all of that sort of thing. But don't jump the gun. Uh, get the basic shapes in first then break down the basic shapes and leave the details for the end. Uh, they really need to be the last thing you do. So I'm softening, keeping my brush at a 45 degree angle. It's, it's blotted, so it's not, I'm not pushing, it's not pushing the paint back. It's just encouraging some of that paint to darker color to to come out into the area where I'm I got it wet there all right coming back into this darker burgundy color and I need to start separating these fingers here so I'm going to come along the bottom I'm going to stay inside my lines here and as it goes underneath this other finger it gets pretty dark in that shadow. Now keep in mind I'm really covering basics here. I am not getting um, not getting a, a full demonstration with this uh, but I'm, I'm hoping to give you better understanding of the structure of a hand, uh, that you can cut it down and, and think of it in planes and shapes and things like that well before you start thinking about the wrinkles on the fingers. This shadow starts to taper off a little bit. It's not too wide there, but it doesn't go in too much of a crease there. So rinse my brush and blot. And you notice I'm coming this way with my arm. I'm not trying to blend it this way. I'm, I want it to come out towards the brush. So I've got the brush above where I am softening in this case and we have now the last one would would you not think that I would put the shadow in the same place but look closely look at this ref reference picture here that's not the case is it we have um, we have actually more light on the the index finger than we do on the middle finger. So to our surprise, this actually gets more shadow on once again on the middle the middle finger, not the index finger. Now because I'm 
shading the opposite side here, I'm going to turn my brush. It's the last time I worked this way, now I'm working this way because I want to pull the color out towards the brush. So that's how I'm softening. There we go. Okay. So we have um, some pretty good structure now and we can start um, fine-tuning even more and more and more. So I want to go a little bit more a little bit more burnt sienna I think on this. And I'm going to start using some more transparent layers. So as I'm working um, I put the darks in and that's those are like landmarks for me that's going to help sort out the shapes you know the one finger from the next and that sort of thing but now each of the layers that I'm going to be putting on are going to be quite transparent um, I, I want to thin them down I want to ease my way into it and um, to answer your question the, I have a question how long do I usually spend to create a realistic painting when you decide to continue your painting the next day do you peel off the tape and store it in separate place just leave it on the table. I just leave it on the table. <laughs> yeah, I, in fact, I've left paintings on, on boards. Actually, I don't leave it on the table. This is actually mounted. Uh, this is only taped, but it is on a piece of foam board. This is not uh, properly stretched, but I do stretch all my paper. So I, I soak it for about three minutes at room temperature. Then I staple it immediately to a sturdy board. It has to be a sturdy board, not something that's going to warp like foam board. Um, so it needs to be something that can accept staples and uh, I will leave it to dry and I leave it to dry overnight and uh, then then once it's dry because you can't put tape over something wet it won't stick so in the morning when it's dry then I put tape around my edges like this and then uh, then I do my painting and I leave it on there long after the paintings dry too uh, like I'll leave my painting on the board like mount it till it's dry right through to the back of the paper uh, if I take it off immediately after painting it it hasn't dried enough and my paper will start to buckle and um, incidentally I did show last week if you missed the um, the demo with the lemons and the the rosemary I did show how to flatten a painting that has uh, buckled or cockled however you want to say it um, all right so let's get back to our our knuckles here and I'm going to be working more transparently and so I'm thinning this down and as I put on these transparent layers I'm still thinking about planes but I'm I know that a lot of times you want to think of creases and wrinkles as little lines. Yeah, I mean, we think of little lines when we talk about our own wrinkles, right? So if you have wrinkles like me, <laughs> but um, you know, like your smile lines and things like that. Yeah, they are kind of lines, kind of, but most of the time when you're interpreting it into a paint, um, a way how to paint it kind of thing, think of it more in terms of leaving leaving the peaks behind. So let, what I mean by that is this. Uh, this knuckle, I'm going to work my way around it in big, broad strokes. Um, rather than taking and actually painting a single line. kind of what is left behind it gives the illusion of the, the creases. That's what's actually going to give the, the illusion. It's these little skinny strips of light in between that allow that illusion. So don't think of creases or wrinkles as individual lines. Think of them as the highlights on those wrinkles. It's much nicer to think of them as highlights anyway, isn't it? <laughs> so 
let's come down here and finish putting in some of these shadows and I'm I'm going to build up on this I will even this this person has a lot of age spots uh, and that sort of thing so I could even work into this a little bit wet and drop in a few little speckles so I'm still painting most of the finger but I'm leaving some of the highlights dry so that they are they are going to actually show up. It's, yes, Karen, exactly. Karen says it's similar to negative painting. That's exactly um, the correct way to think about it. So I'm coming down here and You'll find that if you if you work this way and you you're not painting like with the tip of your brush and you're actually painting a line, then your painting will somehow look more convincing. Now I could take if I were taking my time, I could soften a lot of this and that sort of thing but I'm not going to take the time to do that today um, obviously you can work in layers and layers and layers and and this could be a never-ending thing but we're already an hour into this project so uh, let's uh, let's keep this going so I'm gonna come in here with a little bit more shadow and you can see that I'm leaving leaving bits of light here I'm going to go a little thinner with my paint. I don't want to go too dark here. But all these lines that I'm putting in, um, they, they are following the contours of the fingers. So the contours of the fingers, of course, are cylindrical. They're rounded. So I need to keep that in mind. I just love the character in this person's hands. <laughs> I, for those of you that have been following along with me, you know that you know as of as of uh, May, I became a grandma. So, uh, <laughs> I have a picture of me and my daughter's hands and the baby's hands, of course, and I realize. I'm the old hands, <laughs> which is a little bit unnerving, but um, oh well. <laughs> Character, right? All right? This gets a little darker in here, so I'm getting into there. And I can just come in with many, many transparent layers of, of these colors and I could even start introducing, if I wanted to, I could even start introducing different colors, uh, all kinds of things, but um, you know, you don't have to do everything, you know, that classic skin tone. You can, as long as you're following the correct values and the correct planes and that sort of thing, the planes of the hand and whatnot, um, you can do it any colors you want. There's, there's no just one way of doing things, of course. Let's go a little bit lighter here. You know, one thing about working these transparent layers is it allows you to sort of ease in and, and visualize how things are looking uh, before making a full commitment. <laughs> if you're like me, you're kind of non-committal until you're at the point of no return and then that's it, you know, you're, you're done. But... Um, This is uh, a little bit easier for most of us to ease into these things. Okay, so there's a couple of creases across there. So I can see right now that, okay, my hands, the coloring is a little bit flat right now. I want to maybe come in and, and get things a little bit more 
uh, colorful so I can start easing into this. But I didn't start with too much color because starting with a lot of color can sometimes be a little bit tough to tone down, but it's, pro it's easier to tone down than it is to brighten up. I, but I don't want anything here bright. I'm going to darken this down. This is sort of receding, so it's going to get a little bit darker as it goes back into that shadow color there. And I need to make the knuckles, right, these knuckles need to look uh, lighter by comparison. I keep dropping water here. They need to look lighter by comparison uh, to describe the correct value. Uh, to correct, I mean, to describe the correct planes of the hand and the contours and that sort of thing. So we need to have the right shape, the right value to help us describe that. All right. So, for example, this red color, that the one that I used on the cuff, there's a little bit of that reflecting on this thumb. So, as I come up to this thumb, let's put a little of that red color in there. It's bouncing back and it's hitting the fingers. Very often with hands, things like hands, ears, um, even, you know, nostrils and things like that, you will get a little bit more pink tone to it because the blood vessels are closer to the surface. But in this case, it is uh, more a matter of the, uh, the cuff reflecting. So we get, you know, skin tones, especially, you know, certain dark skin tones in particular can really reflect um, colors, surrounding colors, right? Uh, if I were to hold a, you know, a blue sheet beside my face, for example, uh, you would probably see a real change in the skin tone on my cheek. Um, same with yellow. If I held it yellow on this side and blue on this side, I would get all kinds of different colors. Um, so, yeah, don't don't just think skin tones. Oh, thank you so much, JJ. Um, Oh, baby hands and baby feet. Yes, you don't have all the wrinkles with those. You do have to watch the pudginess and, and definitely the contours with baby hands. Um, I actually did a painting of um, uh, baby feet. Uh, not my granddaughter's feet, but um, another baby's feet. And uh, I had fun with that as well. Very similar in, in this exercise where you have to sort of break things down. But... Um, I want to continue on here. Let's keep this thing rolling. We've got, oh, just before I do get too much into this, I'm going to get a little bit more red. And I'm going to bring some of that red into this finger. And a little bit more into the tips of this hand here. A little bit more in there. Not only is it being reflected, but boy, it is creating some continuity within my painting here. And so it helps to connect things. Uh, the hands are not disconnected from the from the cuffs anymore. Uh, these cuffs are obviously way too bright at the moment, uh, but I do need some highlights. So I would come in and start dulling down some of the cuff. Uh, for example. I would come in and start taking some of this red, add some neutral tint to it, maybe even some permanent rose, get a duller red, and break up those, there's like a crease there, so I need to soften an edge, so I'm going to come along and soften this upper edge with my blotted brush. Let's soften this lower edge. Let's get a little paint, a little more paint in there first, and then we'll soften that lower edge. And 
and you know you can eat it's easy to dull down a color it's harder to get it fresh again so I started off fresh in that case uh, the skin tones I, I kept with the basic local color but now I'm introducing a little bit more um, color to it because none of it's going to be brilliant uh, none of it's it's just kind of some reflected colors so I'm coming into some of these areas and just going to rosy them up a little bit but the the main structure is there in terms of the the shape and the the value softening as I go some of this um, this color that I'm using is uh, called rose door it's very similar to like a scarlet lake it's uh, a little on the orange side but every skin tone is different uh, I'm telling you what I'm using but this is not my go-to formula for skin tones. People often say, uh, what, color, what color do you use for skin tone? Well, I use a whole lot, <laughs> a whole lot of colors, all kinds. Um, all right, so let's just start um, putting this into context. I like at some point in my paintings to get some real good darks in there. Um, I'm just looking at my time here. So I want to get some real good darks in here so that I can see whether or not my values are, um, if I've gone far enough with my values. I can tell you right, right now I haven't, but um, I'm going to put some darks in there because it, it helps you to see it. Uh, the paint colors I'm using, uh, well, I'm going to be using a lot of darks. I used a lot of neutral tint in there actually just mostly neutral tint in this section but I'm going to come in with um, now this person looks like they have like a gray sweater on blue gray uh, I'm not going to get into a lot of the you know I've mentioned I'm not going to get into the detail of the sweater but I will get some blue here uh, some neutral tint make it into kind of a denim blue and let's just get that in there working in quick here get the side of my brush going because that will get the paint down quicker I'm using ultramarine blue and neutral tint to make this uh, nice dark denim blue I have to watch my edges in some cases, some cases, not all of them, because what I want to create here, and one of the reasons I really want to get this background in, is I want to get some lost edges happening. So lost edges, I'm going to get a little, I'm going to start getting into some Payne's Gray here, because Payne's Gray is going to be a lot darker. So I'm going to let that start to merge with my blue kind of holding my breath as I go around some of these shapes trying to get them careful get them in there carefully so I'm going um, Payne's gray it's got uh, heavier coverage than my neutral tint and it's a little bit more blue so I'm going new uh, Payne's gray in my background here so try to get my shape of my knuckle in there and I'm going to come up here around the knuckle here. And uh, if, you got, if you came in late, um, I just want to mention that tomorrow we're talking, okay, so you might be watching the replay, but uh, on Thursday, August 25th, 19, or it's 19, oh my gosh, 2022, um, I will be doing a uh, demonstration with Eric Rhodes um, on Streamline Art Video. You can look them up on YouTube. Uh, it will also be on Facebook if you follow um, Eric Rhodes or um, Streamline Art Videos. 
on uh, either of those platforms you will be able to catch that and I will be talking a lot about edges all right so let's get in around these shapes really loading up my brush now this is this is working on dry and I am working as quickly as I can but this is exactly why I took a few minutes to soften up my paints right at the start. If I didn't soften them up, there's no chance that I'm going to get this kind of richness to my color otherwise. Uh, I might get some I might get some darkness if I put out fresh paint, of course. Uh, but I I find that having my paint in my wells is just more convenient for me. It's the way I like to work. Uh, some people put out fresh paint every time. Um, I'm not that... I'm a little more frugal, shall, shall we say. So I'm going to... not going to uh, do that for every painting I do. And I'm always painting, so... And... Uh, I'm going to get this in here and right now I kind of have a lot of edges but I'm going to start losing some of them on purpose. I think that's important to know that some edges don't need to have crispness which is exactly what I'm going to talk about tomorrow. I'm really going to go into more detail about that. Um, Alright, so let's come in here. I'm going to get this blended in. I'm going to put some more blue in here because this really is going to be quite dark in here and I want it to kind of disappear. There we go, that nice dark denim blue. And I'm making sure that what I'm putting down is sort of the similar consistency of what is around it because if I go in wetter, I will push away all that paint that I just put down. All right, so let's get a little more paint spray back in here. Now that's one layer, and I'll probably end up doing another one. In fact, if I really want to have the smoothest uh, transitions and everything, um, then I will be um, probably doing a couple of layers. Uh, what time tomorrow? Uh, it's going to be at noon. Noon time, Eastern time. Okay, so 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, which is my time zone. Um, you'll have to calculate it from wherever you are, but uh, in my time zone, that's what it is. I'm going to take some of this duller red here and get some of this worked in here. And this this edge here, this is I really want to lose this cuff. So this red I'm putting in is the same consistency as, <coughs> pardon me, the um, paints gray on the background. So the two will blend. But look in between here, it's not. <coughs> it's actually dry. So I need to come in with my damp brush and get this moving so that it's a similar consistency. When I have two paints that are the same consistency or two areas uh, of equal moisture, <coughs> pardon me, um, then uh, they will blend nicely. When one is drier, it is going to bully, or uh, if, when one is wetter, it's going to bully the drier one. Uh, this neutral tint that I have is, um, I think this one is uh, Winter Newton. But Da Vinci makes one as well, 
and um, I've, I've had both, so I'm, that's why I'm not sure if which one is in my palette at the moment. But um, they're they're very similar, obviously. And I'm just wiping the excess off my edges here, off my tape, just to make sure I don't get any get my arm in it or something like that, and transfer it into my into my hands. All right, so now let's talk about these these lost edges that we were that I was referring to. So I'm going to blot a clean brush. My background is wet, and I'm going to try not to put my arm in my paint here, but um, blot my brush well, and I'm going to start softening these edges so that they kind of melt into the finger. And remember to soften an edge. I've got my brush at a about a 45 degree angle. It's blotted. It's not wetter than the surface. And you can see like how weird this one, this hand looks now because it has all these hard edges on it. So if I come in and I soften, I can make it look a lot more realistic. So bottom line is that when I see a lot of new painters in watercolor, uh, I see an awful lot of hard edges, very cut and paste looking kind of edges. It almost looks as if the hands were painted separately and stuck on or the house or the tree or the whatever happens to be very, very hard edges. Um, so I need to go obviously a lot darker. I think my, my camera is actually much lighter than my reality. So let me do a little adjustment here so that what you see is what I've actually painted. Um, let me just make this little adjustment here so that you can see. Yeah, my, my brightness is up quite a bit. Turn down the contrast a little bit too. And That is a little better. Um, so it's it's not quite as light as it seemed. <laughs> um, still a little lighter than what I've actually painted, but let me see if I can go a little bit further here. There we go. That's probably more true to what I've actually painted. And um, so now it's a matter of coming in and Building, building, building. Go into my plotter there, and uh, I want to go more dark brown here. So I'm going to go a little more burnt sienna, a little bit of a little bit of um, permanent rose, and more neutral tint here. Looking for a nice brown. But on the reddish side, so more of a more of a reddish brown, and I'm going to thin it a little bit. So I don't want to go too heavy because remember I said the the layers you want to keep the layers fairly transparent so that you know you can build in smaller increments. Um, people always are in such a hurry to finish the painting, and I I don't get it. <laughs> I guess that's just me. I don't quite get it because for me, the the fun is in the actual painting. Once it's done, it's kind of like, ah, give me something else, <laughs> you know? Uh, so, like, take your time with the painting. Why rush it? I know, um, I know you're eager to see how it's going to turn out and all of that kind of stuff, but my goodness, uh, don't be in such a hurry that it doesn't turn out, <laughs> right? You need to exercise a little bit of patience with watercolor. There's no question. 
and even a loose watercolor painter you know you need to know uh, about timing and stuff so you need to at least be patient enough to stick with it right to stick with painting and, and learn its idiosyncrasies and all of those things that make watercolor watercolor and that's not an overnight thing you it's going to take you time to do that so little increments now i can start creating that that look of the the nail go or the finger going let me do it in the dark here dark area dark background but the the contour of this dipping down before the nail bed and so i need to get a little bit of shadow into there I usually spend, just keep in mind, I usually spend a lot of time working on this. The only reason I'm kind of whipping through this is because we're on a quick demo timeline. And I'm sure you guys have painting or something to do today. Maybe you want to rush out and try this. Uh, like I said, if you want to try this exact demo, it is on uh, the reference I, I got from unsplash.com. It is in the description below the video, so you can you look that up. Let's get these. I'm softening these as I go. And get a little more, a little more dark into some of these areas. The more uh, sort of range of value that I create, the more dimensional this will become. So the greater the range of value, the more dimensional it will become. If I work within, you're all familiar with value scale. So um, if I work between say a two and a seven, and so my lightest area is uh, a two and my darkest is a seven, I don't have the brightest highlights. I don't have the darkest shadows. So it, it's hard to make something look a lot more dimensional. That's one thing I really liked about this picture is that we have um, very pronounced um, values here. It, it has uh, not only the wonderful uh, character of the hand, but it also has um, the, the right kind of lighting to really emphasize the character. If you put something down too and it's too dark, just have a paper towel and, and blot it quickly as you go. Um, so I'm going to go a little more reddish here. I don't want to go too black with any of these uh, little creases and things. But um, I'm looking at this now what I'm what I've just done on this hand is not good remember when I said we're going to work in small increments we're going to go with diluted color this color that I just put down it's not diluted enough so now it looks cartoony right this hand looks a lot more real but this one looks like a cartoon so these what I put down is way too jumped too many values so I softened it that was on purpose too by the way I wanted to make sure that you uh, understood what the difference was between going too many too dark too fast and sometimes that's impatience and a lot of times it's just not knowing so build up in smaller increments uh, take your time with it um, enjoy the process I think I got that one wet uh, 
you know, just go a value or two. Don't don't try to do it all in one uh, one application because it's the it's that slow build that will really give you that that higher level of realism. Because I know many of you out there are probably wanting to paint more realistically, and I wish in an hour demo I could put in enough um, enough time or enough detail. Uh, to the extent of my high realism that I normally do. But that's simply not possible in a short period of time. So there's the dilemma that teachers fa are faced with, right? So they they want to show you how they do it, but nobody wants to sign up for a you know 20 hour class because it's too too extensive, right? And it would be expensive to take. But um, but I try the best I can to cover all the all the points uh, within the, the time that I have. And if you want something a little bit more involved, I have uh, a lot of Zoom workshops that I have done uh, starting started during COVID. And I started doing these workshops um, pretty much every week and have kept them up. And I actually have, I uh, should mention that um, as of this fall, 2022, I have uh, several new projects up there, so uh, you can go to my website at that and check those out. Those are um, that's also in the description below, so you can work that out. I'm incorporating a little bit more of this reddish color in here just to to get a little bit more um, life into these hands. Uh, it's still awfully light, it seems, so I'm going to. Put in some more layers and uh, build up a little bit more uh, but I'll be wrapping this up in a minute in a couple of minutes because well let's face it we can't be here all day so I want to come in uh, just being extra careful not to build up too much value or like put too much in where I need to keep things light um, I love the creases in the hand here. It's so, so much character. All right, but thin, I'm going thin layers here to help describe these shapes. Um, little bit more I'm not taking a lot of time for for softening and all of that kind of stuff I'm just kind of putting on thin layers and letting letting happen whatever whatever happens well I got some of my background color in there but that's okay I've got a dark shadow that needs to go in there anyway and uh, I'll get this one a little bit darker while I'm at it. And um, I think I may be wrapping this one up. I just I don't want to keep going and going and going. I could. I definitely could. But uh, we need to uh, finish this one up for today. So um, I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, I wanted to cover the drawing, which, of course, ate up a lot of our time this morning. But um, anyway, this was a long one. This was one of my long longer ones that I've done but uh, but hands are you know have a little bit more inter idios like intricacies that's the word I was looking for and um, so uh, yeah so hopefully that helps you to understand uh, how I approach these types of things even from the drawing stages and that sort of thing um, and do check out uh, look for me tomorrow um, August 25th 2022 and uh, I'll be on Streamline Art Videos, uh, paint, uh, paint Tube, you Paint Tube TV, <laughs> and um, Eric Rhodes uh, will be his guest. So hopefully we'll see you tomorrow at noon Eastern time, and uh, we'll wrap that up for today. 
Thank you so much, and I will delete these uh, spam mails. <laughs> Take care, everybody. Bye.